Welcome to Math Memo. This is a proof of the AMGM inequality, which states that the arithmetic mean of a list of non-negative real numbers is greater than or equal to the geometric mean of the same list of numbers. We're going to prove this inequality using backwards and forwards induction, where we start with n equals 2 as the initial case and prove that it's true for n equals 4, n equals 8, and then we come back to prove the cases in between. So we prove true for n equals k, true for n equals 2k, and then back k minus 1, etc. Step 1, we set up our initial case. If n were equal to 1, that is, if there is only one number, then it's quite trivial. The left-hand side is equal to x1 on 1, which is equal to x1, which is equal to the first root of x1, which is also x1, which is equal to the right-hand side. It's trivially true. So let's look at n is equal to 2, when there are two terms. Consider that the square of root x1 minus root x2 must be greater than or equal to 0, and x1 and x2 are both non-negative. Expanding the left-hand side, we have x1 minus 2, root of x1, x2 plus x2 is greater than or equal to 0, and therefore x1 plus x2 is greater than or equal to 2 root of x1, x2, and dividing both sides by 2 gives us the inequality for two terms, when n is equal to 2. And when n equals 2, this is our initial case. Step two is the induction proper, which itself, if you recall, is split into two steps. The first step of the induction is to prove that if n is equal to k is true, then n is equal to 2k is true. So if x1 plus x2 all the way up to xk all over k is greater than or equal to the kth root of x1, x2, dot 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 xk, then we want to prove that n is equal to 2k is true. x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to x2k, all over 2k, because there are 2k terms, is equal to the 2k root x1, x2, dot, 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 x2k. That's our hypothesis, and the top line is our star. Let's try to substitute our star equation into the hypothesis. So the left-hand side of the hypothesis is x1 plus x2, all the way up to x2k, over 2k which we can rewrite by splitting up the, the top half of the fraction into x to xk and xk plus 1 to x2k. The first part of the equation we can rewrite as k times the kth root of x1 all the way up to xk, and the second part of the equation is k times kth root of xk plus 1 all the way up to x2k. So the left-hand side of the hypothesis is going to be greater than or equal to k times the kth root of x1, x2, dot, dot, xk, plus k times the kth root of x, k plus 1, x, k plus 2, dot, 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 x, 2k, all over 2k. Cancelling out the k's, we get the kth root of x1, x2, dot, 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 xk, plus the kth root of x, k plus 1, x, k plus 2, dot, 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 x, 2k all over 2. And we notice this is of the form a plus b on 2 is greater than or equal to root ab, with just two terms, which we've established is true from our initial case. Therefore, the left-hand side of the hypothesis is greater than or equal to the square root of the kth root of x1, x2, dot, 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 xk, times the kth root of xk plus 1, xk plus 2, dot, dot, x, 2k, which is equal to the 2kth root of x1, x2, dot, 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 xk, times xk plus 1, xk plus 2, dot, 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 x, 2k. Therefore, if n is equal to k is true, then n is equal to 2k is also true. That was the forward step of our induction. Now onto the backward step. When n is equal to k is true, we want to show that n is equal to k minus 1 is also true. The assumption is that x1 plus x2 plus dot 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 all the way up to xk over k is greater than or equal to the kth root of x1, x2, etc, xk. This is true for all xk. So what if we let xk be a very specific term, and this term is x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xk minus 1 over k minus 1. So if we let xk be this very specific term, the above equation should also hold. Let's substitute xk is equal to x1 plus x2 plus 
plus x k minus 1 over k minus 1 into the left hand side of the star our assumption as follows you can see the substitution for x k in orange something really magical happens when you expand the fraction and collect like terms you get this cancelling out the k's you end up with x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xk minus 1 over k minus 1. So let's rewrite it and let's substitute x is equal to x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xk minus 1 over k minus 1 into the right hand side as well and raise both left hand side and right hand side to the power of k like so. Divide both sides by the brackets, what's in the brackets, and we can do this without changing the sign because we know what's in the brackets is definitely positive because each term is non-negative. Once we take the k minus 1 root of both sides, we see that if the inequality is true for n is equal to k, then it's true also for n is equal to k minus 1. Finally, to recap n is the number of terms in the inequality. From step 1, we have shown that when there are only two terms, the inequality is true. Therefore, the inequality holds true for n is equal to 2. From step 2, in the forwards part of the induction, we have shown that if n is equal to 2 is true, then n is equal to 4 is true, and so n is equal to 8 is true, and so on. In the backwards part of the induction, we show that if n is equal to 4 is true, then n is equal to 3 is true, and if n is equal to 8 is true, then n is equal to 7 is true, and n is equal to 6 is true, and n is equal to 5 is true, and so on. And so by forwards and backwards induction, we have shown that the AMGM inequality indeed holds true. And that's the end of this week's memo. Thank you very much for watching.